Oh. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to those on your west coast. Good afternoon to those on the east coast. Uh, good evening to those in Europe. And uh, how you guys doing today? A little more chill with the show today. Partly because I just woke up. I stayed up all night uh, doing some some homework for the show. Some deep homework. I went into someone's, a uh, couple people's uh, Paladin stats. <coughs> Trying to find some some information that I needed for them. Um, but yeah. Should be... Should be uh, a little bit more in-depth show today. Uh, uh, here, I mean, what a land, right? What a land. Summer land uh, just finished up. By the way, I'm reading chat, so if you can't hear me, let me know this time, okay? Um, hmm. uh, first and foremost, I want to let everyone know thank you for all the feedback and everything on the survey. Um, I know a big part of the survey is for the uh, all-star ballot, but there's two questions at the bottom there. One is... Uh, can you rate the console corner show from one to five stars, five being the best one being the worst? Uh, predominantly we've gotten four star. Uh, the average is about 4.1. So that's good. And the second question at the bottom there is what can we delete or add to the console corner show to, to make it uh, a better show, a better experience? Cause that's what it's all about when it comes down to it. It's all about is is this show enjoyable? Is it a good experience? There's shows that uh, people watch on Hulu and Netflix and television. and you, you feel as if you're a part of the show when you watch it because it, it gives you that experience that you want to be a part of. And that's what I want the Console Corner Show to do for you, myself, and other viewers in the community for Paladins Esports on console. I want us to, to feel like we belong. Uh, so that's a big thing there. I got a lot of feedback too. Uh, some negative and some positive, which is good. I want negative. You can't move forward. You can't progress if you don't get the constructive criticism that you need. Uh, but let's talk about the summer land. Uh, you know, the first matchup was Vex versus Onslaught. We've seen this matchup at the spring finals. And it's best of three this time uh, due to the fact that there's a double elimination. I don't really like that it was a best of three. I wanted to see best of fives. I think they could have fit best of fives in, even if every game went to five games. I know they had a long day on Saturday. Uh, but I, I really want to see best of fives. And I know the viewers do too. I know the, the players want to play best of five. At the end of the day, they're going to be tired, but they want to play those best of fives because they want to play more. They, they want that competition. Let me go ahead and pull my dress up here because I got, I got some problems with what happened, especially in the first one. So Onslaught came into this land. They said publicly, we're going to run triple DPS. And they did. I think only one match or one game uh, the entire time they ran double tank. Other than that, they ran triple DPS the entire time. So they announced that they're going to solo tank and run triple DPS. The first game, Vex bans Khan. As you all may know, Khan is a very, very Viable character. Beautiful side tank. Strong kit. Especially with the firing lane talent. But banning Khan for Vex, I think, in the draft, is what 
help them lose the game. So you ban Khan and you ban Moji. Moji's a good ban. You know Wonderful is wanting to play him. You know Wonderful loves playing the Moji. He's probably the best Moji uh, in the world on console right now. Uh, but you don't need to ban that Khan. The reason why you don't need to ban that Khan is because you want Khan. And even if you don't want Khan, I don't think they're going to take Khan on Onslaught. So that was, that's something I would tweak. I don't, I don't think they're going to take Khan. They, they want to run triple DPS. Therefore, Khan's a terrible solo tank. And if they run double tank, then they're not playing the style they want to play. They'll be a little bit uncomfortable. It feels a little forced to them if they have to double tank. They won their only game with double tank, but I don't think I don't think they needed to ban the con. They also took Drogos first, and the first map was uh, Jaguar Falls. Drogos arguably his best map is between Frog Isle and Jag Falls. But if you, if you watch the game film, if you watch some previous matches of Jag Falls for uh, Onslaught, they run triple DPS very often, especially on Jag Falls. And I think the Kanban and the first pick Drogos really set them apart in that game. Uh, they lost that game. Uh, four to one. Slopadopoulos played well that game, though. Uh, he tried his best. He kind of staggered towards the end there, um, but he he tried. Uh, the second game, they went to Frog Isle. They did the same thing this time. Again, they banned the con. I don't think they're going to take the con. Throughout this entire tournament, uh, tournament, throughout the whole summer finals, they played three tanks. Terminus, Anara, and Makoa. They predominantly banned Fernando, too. They knew exactly that what they wanted to do. They didn't want to deal with Fernando most of the time, so they, they got rid of that. Um, and... Trenzik was on the Anara mostly throughout the entire tournament. Behind that would be the Makoa. He played Terminus, I think, once himself, and Wonderful pulled it out when they ran the double tank game as well. When does Trenzik come on the show? Uh, well, I contacted the entire Onslaught team and asked them who wanted to be on it. Trenzik was skeptical because he's a giant but I don't think he wants to be on the show Miracle says he's at work otherwise he would do it I think uh, reached out to some other players on other teams that were at LAN we'll, we'll, we'll go through a part where if we want to talk to anybody we can let's talk about Flashpoint versus Elevate in their first matchup the Genos ban after Furia on the first map, first of all, the first map was Fish Market. That's not so common. I think um, they wanted to throw throw the opponent off by picking the map first. Geno's ban after Furia. Here's here's the thing with that. Flashpoint was super smart to to ban that Geno's. Uh, Flashpoint has first pick, so obviously Elevate says, "Okay, we don't want you to have Furia, best best support in the game. We're going to ban that." And Flashpoint responds with a scouting report move, I would call it. Because they they have played against Neil already. They have scouting reported Neil. So they ban the Genos. And for anyone who doesn't know, Neil, he can play all the supports. Uh, but at this level, I think he has a certain amount of them that he looks towards in his champ pool. Um so you ban the Furia, that's one of them. 
that limits his pool. They they ban the Genos that limits his pool again. It's a long range map, so I think he wanted to go Grover over Saris, so Flashpoint took the Saris. Um, but I think banning the Genos is a big move regardless, but I think it was even bigger in this game because of the small support champ pool for Neil. Uh, Flashpoint made misplays all game. This was a 4-0 in the way of Elevate, and it's just misplays all game. They, their positioning was a little off, allowing Sir James Parker to just dominate with the Cassie all game. Uh, and Elevate just hit the gas pedal early. Uh, game two, there was a pause. And I think this pause, I, I forget the reason that they said this pause happened. But I think that pause is, is the reason um, Flashpoint lost a little bit of momentum there. First of all, I don't know if anyone noticed, but as soon as the game started, Flashpoint was winning that game before the pause and the restart. They were winning. And they had the Barrack. Barrack was their last pick. Flashpoint had Barrack. I, I only thought B was playing the Barrack, and he bought Illuminate first. So I don't know if that's the reason for the restart or anything like that. Uh, so they won that as well, keeping the gas pedal down. Let's go to the loser's bracket. Flashpoint over Vexed. Uh, so there's two EU teams facing each other. Vexed took a map off of them, but Flashpoint was still a little strong. Uh, Elevate was up one nothing versus Onslaught because of the Moji play on Bright Marsh. Here's it. And then they were out drafted in game three. Take a look here real quick. I want to see that draft. It's four to one on Bright Marsh. So they banned Drugos and Genos on the way of Elevate. Bomb King and Fernando banned out by Onslaught, which is actually a really smart move. You know, they know Sir James Parker plays the Bomb King. He favors it on Bright Marsh. Extremely talented with that character. So they ban it out. They keep they they stick to their plan of banning the Fernando. Uh and they take the Buck and Willow first after Elevate first picks the Moji. They also get the Khan and Makoa. Now, here's the, here's the problem I've had with Elevate uh, in this. They have Makoa their first game out. And Shu is playing their Makoa. He did fairly decent on the Makoa. And Woosh is on the Khan. Uh, a couple games later, they have a Khan and Makoa again. Shoes on the Buck, I think it was. Or this game, he was on the Grok, but there was another game where they had a Makoa and he was on the Buck. Uh, and then Atomic Boom is on the Khan, and Woosh is on the Makoa. I think if Elevate wants to continue their success... They need to have Woosh on the Makoa. No offense to Shu and no offense to Atomic Boom. I think they're most effective with uh, Woosh on the Makoa. Atomic Boom can play the Khan better than he can play the, the Makoa. Uh, Shu's the best Grok in the world. Clearly showed that. Grok is super out of meta. Um, by far, probably one of the worst characters in the game. He's a good He's good for damage if you already have a support. The problem is there's so many other damages better than him. Or more viable uh, before you have to go Grok. But they pulled him out. And uh, it, was, it was interesting to see. So that, I think, is, is a little advantage that they had. They... Threw everybody off. I know everybody came in thinking this is going to happen this way. This is going to happen this way. They might do this. They might do that. I don't think anybody really came in saying they're going to pull Grok out. Someone's going to pull Grok out. I don't think that. 
it's a little different than like uh, Sky. You know, Welsh Mania pulled out the Sky at the Spring Masters. He pulled it out at uh, HRX. And I'm, I can't remember if he pulled it out at Valencia. But he pulled it out at HRX and everyone was like, ho, 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 ho. So I think that was the surprise then. The surprise this time was the HRX. I mean, sorry. The surprise this time was the Grok pick. And when you pick Grok, it's exactly what Neil said in the interview before the final started. It has to be a niche pick. You have to the other the enemy team has to pick a comp that allows you to pick Grok. And you have to pick a comp that allows you to to run with Grok as well. You can't just pick Grok. Uh, Elevate made quick work of Flashpoint again. This time, I think their success was by flexing all the roles. They put Atomic Boom on damage. Sir James Parker on frontline. They just, just, I think what they did was they're just like, all right, we're going to draft an order of importance of character, and then you just play that character. We won't even trade. Which was fun to see. It's fun to see everybody flexing their roles. Um, so let's talk about the finals. I've got a few things about to say about the finals here. Um, okay, so game one. Elevate versus... Elevate versus uh, Onslaught here. They're on Bright Marsh. Okay. The bands are Bomb King and Leanne. Whoa. Whoa. All right. So they go to Bright Marsh first. This is a good map to start off with. Elevate knows that they beat them on Bright Marsh the first time. Elevate knows that Bright Marsh is a strong map for them. Uh, they banned out Frog Isle, and I don't think that was a good play. Yes, Onslaught is strong on Frog Isle, but I think that they needed to ban a, a narrow or long map, and I'll explain to you why here in a second. So Elevate takes Bright Marsh first. But the success to this game led Onslaught to a 4-0. Going into Bright Marsh, you've played against them. They pick the Grok. You think they're going to take the Grok again. So you save a damage pick. In doing so, they grab the Grok. So in response, they put Cool Matt on the Tyra. Um... In that situation, you can run the hunting party, Tyra. Or you can run the, um, the burn monster, even. So I think that was a 200 IQ play right there. You grab the Tyra. Boom. Onslaught wins 4-0. Next map, Stone Keep. This is Onslaught's map pick, I believe. Elevate 4 Ozum. Now, in game three of Elevate versus Onslaught, the first time in the tournament, I want to talk about this. Onslaught completely outdrafts Elevate on Stone Keep. Same map. Onslaught had the Vivian, the Victor, and the Willow. You have Willow, especially in her alt, who can fly around, take high ground. You've got Victor, who can push into you, but he can also stay behind and dump damage into you. And then you have Vivian, who can do the same thing, even stronger, push into you, or sit back and dump damage into you. So theoretically, I would, if, if I'm Elevate, I want to hit scan to deal with Willow. They took the buck and the con. That was the only hit scans they had. Buck is a good pick, but the problem is against that triple DPS, there's three of them that can sit back together, put heavy damage into your point, and then you have to and then Buck has to worry about Vivian's shield. Buck has to worry about them being together. 
it's it's really hard for Buck to be as productive in that against that uh, comp from what I can see, and it was from what we could see in the game. They had no other hit scan. They had no no sort of long range hit scan to deal with the willow. The willow pretty much just free fired. I think their other champ, the other, they had a zin. Sir James Parker was on the zin. Uh, they lost that game four to two. This time they win four zero. Onslaught took one fly with the Jogos, and they took their two hit scans again. Uh, but Elevate was ready for it. They. They drafted a hit scan. They got something to control the high ground on this map this time. And they came in and they won 4 0. Then they go to his, um, Ascension Peak. And this was the only map that Onslaught double tanked on. They ran Terminus and R, I believe. So that was interesting. To watch Onslaught go double tank. They won that match 4-2, to two, but I think that was a little... That, that game was a little tougher for them to win considering they've been running triple DPS for, for so long. And the last map, they go to Jaguar Falls. And they win 4-1. to one. They win the set 3-1. to one. I think on Jag Falls, Elevate just tried too hard to match the play style. I think they tried to take their play style and, and mix it with uh, Onslaughts and, and kind of force it. You know, they had the Genos and Furia, and then they had a Khan Barrack with a Zin. So they have a really, really dive-worthy comp. They just want to push into them. And that's what Onslaught does a lot. They just... Grab these characters that can dump damage into people and push into them. Oh, Onslaught did have double tank on that map as well. Forgot about that one. So, congratulations to Onslaught. Uh,. Skeppy got MVP, gets the quadra on the last map, I think it is. Um, I just think Onslaught outdrafted 90% of the time. They went in there with a certain strategy that they wanted to have. I tell people this all the time. I say meta is important. Your your players' champ pools are important. But at the end of the day, I think if you just pick champs that your your team is good with and you and you and you just play them better than the other team plays their characters, I think you'll be successful. So I think Onslaught had that mentality. They said, We're gonna pick these characters. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna ban these characters, or at least this one character most of the time. Uh, this is our game plan. They like to stretch themselves. Uh, if you notice, they played a lot of Jag Falls. They played a lot of Stone Keep. With that triple DPS comp, those those maps, they've got real narrow lanes uh, compared to the small maps like Bright Marsh where you know things are more congested. So I think Onslaught, they like the narrow maps. They, they like the, the triple DPS uh, the zone capability that they have on maps such as Stone Keep, Jag Falls. Uh, not much high ground on Jag Falls. A little bit of high ground uh, on Stone Keep, especially during the pushes. So I think Onslaught was just very effective. They knew exactly what maps they wanted to play the entire time. They knew exactly where they were going to take their uh, comps on each map. The problem I have is that people just allowed the Vivian to be taken. People just allowed, you know, Flashpoint wins uh, Spring Masters. Good lad plays Vivian 90% of the time. Onslaught wins the Summerland. They play Vivian 90% of the time. So I, I just believe that, you know, the Moji was a big factor, but 
would you ban Moji and Vivian? Maybe leave that con open. Unlike Vex did, I I don't think they're gonna take the con. Uh, in any of those situations, they want a triple DPS. They want to try to move that uh, play style forward. And Onslaught just, they keep their maps large, fast, narrow, long range. Um, I think they just outdrafted everyone. Uh, let's go into the PCL format. I know a lot of you want to know how this works. Um, so, and I, I'd like to know your opinions on this as well. So, this is how it goes. Okay, there's two weeks of open bracket, uh, which is the same as the first three weeks of PCS play usually. So, Starting this weekend, Saturday for Europe and Sunday for North America, uh, as many teams, as many teams as, uh, I don't, how, how should I say this? Every team in the world <laughs> can sign up uh, in week one and two. It's open bracket, okay? And you gain points based on what place you finish in the tournament. So let's say. You finish first. For example, let's say you get 10 points. In second place, you would get 9 points. Third place would get 8 points. Um, fourth place would get 7 points. Fifth through eighth would get 6 points. Okay? Yes, 6 points for fifth through eighth. Then it's ninth through 16 would get like five points. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, then after the first two weeks, the top eight teams, the top eight teams from one region on one console. So for example, let's do Xbox NA. Eight. Xbox NA teams from that open bracket with the most points, the top eight teams, advance to week three. Week three, they will take two, they will split those eight teams into two groups of four. Those two groups of four will play a double elimination against each other. Top two teams from each group enter into the PCL, which is the Paladins Console League. Chris out. That is the DreamHack Valencia point system. So top two from each group advance into the league. And then they play six weeks of round robin format. And four teams qualify for HRX, the norm one per region per console. Here's the problem I have with this entire tournament, this entire this entire system. It's a sorry excuse for a league to get the console players to shut up or to be distracted. I don't think a ton of effort was put into this system. Towards the back end, maybe. Hey, let's split the two groups of... Let's split the eight teams into two groups of four. Hey, let's put the top two teams from each into the league. Maybe that took more effort, but... The front end, it's like... Ah, oh, let's just do open bracket like Valencia qualifiers. Give them points. And then week three is... Oh, top eight teams. Yeah, let's just do it like uh, PCS. The other thing that really upsets me is how only four teams go to HRX. Granted, Summer Finals had a pretty low number of people watching the the broadcast. Spring Finals were lit. That Those streams were 
had tons of people for a, a console sh- uh, land stream. HRX, by far, console had the best show. The real PC finals was Navi versus Nocturnal. Um, the finals they had on the main stage were just embarrassing. Uh, they they lacked entertainment. Those of you who watched from home the console finals at HRX or were there even, that was a show. Went six games. I remember sitting there next to the Flashpoint team and they were Ghost 5 at the time. We had uh, the Xbox kids on my other side, Ari, Apathy. Uh, we had some. We had uh, the Vex boys there too. And a couple of other people that came down to watch. Uh, and I turned around, and in the back, towards the left, we had uh, the the Realm Royale setup. And then back to this side over here, we had the uh, this the new map. For Smite, you could play the new map of Smite. And then over there, we had uh, Bot Smashers. And then we had the main stage. And I remember when, when the finals were about to start, they were on stage talking. Yes, Tay was there too. She was screaming. And I would turn around. And I would look and I'd be like, hmm. We got all the console kids right here. We're about... Two rows deep on that side of the row. We're about three rows deep on this side. It's got about five, six rows. I look back, a couple empty seats. There's a couple people sitting there, eating. Some people are talking, laughing. We got some people from the stream team right there making fun of console like Pecker Parrot and uh, Faye Razzle. They're laughing, joking around. And then game one happens. Okay? Game one happens. I turn around. There's two more rows of people. Game two happens. Turn around. It's like three more rows of people. By the time we got to game four and five, there were people who had to stand and watch. During the PC finals, I'm sitting with my buddy Garcia. Those of you who don't know, he's uh, um, he, he was on my team and he's a good friend of mine on Paladins. Always in the stream, always looking for information, always uh, improving. But... I told him, I said, I got to use the bathroom. He was like, okay. And I'm like, no, like right now during this match, I don't really care. Fanatic's trash. Cybate is trash. These finals are trash. So I think that this doesn't help us. This does not help console. Four teams only going to HRX again in November. After console has proven that we are the better live show. I mean, I had a Vuvuzela, for Christ's sakes. Let me know what you guys think about the PCL. The other problem I have with this is that it's round-robin format. Those of you who don't know what that is, I don't really... I can't really explain it. It's just... You, the best way to explain round robin format is that everybody plays everybody, which is bad, because you can suffer. The tournament can suffer from being too long. The later games potentially mean nothing. If one team is undefeated, and another team is completely winless, that that team that is undefeated has already qualified for the next phase. So. They don't even have to try against this team. 
Who's going to watch that? It's pointless. And also, round-robin formats often need tie-breaking procedures. The other problem I have with this is that it's best of ones. Finals are best of threes. But these are best of ones in the open bracket play. And in the group stage. Matches will still be played on Saturday and Sundays, I assume, because the games are broadcast at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Mixer.com slash Paladins game every Monday. Best of one is the dumbest thing I've heard. Moving on. Let's talk about Elevate. New roster. So, this is their roster in qualifiers. Shu, Tommy Jet, Sorrow, Atomic Boom, and Neil. This is their roster at Lant. Shoe Sorrow, Atomic Boom, Neil, Woosh, and SJP. Tommy Jack couldn't go. SJP steps in for him. This is their new roster. Oh, we got a quick question. Do I have to play the first and the second week to qualify? It's a good... It's a good good question. Here's the answer to that question. Yes and no. If you show up week one and you win the tournament, you have the most points. It depends on how many teams show up in week two and which teams show up from week one to week two. If the second place team from week one shows up in week two, and wins because you didn't show up, then they'll have more points than you. So my advice is to show up for week one and two and try your hardest to win both. Going back to Elevate here, let's look at their new roster. Shu, Emmett Payne, SJP, Woosh, GR Crazy, and Ludex. So they kicked all of the PS4 guys out and they bring in even more Xbox transfers. Xbox is like the Roman Empire trying to take over right now. It's just you get one guy who comes over and is like, hi guys, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real friendly. And then all of a sudden Boom. There's 20 guys there. Okay. So, let's talk about their new roster here. You're going to have Shu on the flex. Emmett Payne can flex between tanks and damages. Preferably. SJP is going to be on that damage. Woosh is going to be on that tank. Uh, Ludex was listed as their coach. Obviously, that means he's probably going to be their sub. I haven't really seen Ludex play uh, that much, so I can't really comment on his play or critique him too much. Uh, GR Crazy is going to be their support. I've only known Cra GR from being a damage, which is crazy. You know, HRX, he was their damage player. Um, but he's playing the support here now. I like this lineup. I'm going to tell you this. I like Elevate's new lineup. I like this new lineup. They, they've got a lot of potential. We saw them at... Uh, the land this past weekend, you know, they beat Flashpoint the second time in the losers bracket. Everybody was flexing rolls. Everybody was switching up. Um, so 
I think they can do that even better with this lineup. I think Emmett Payne is an upgrade from Atomic Boom. I think Crazy is an update, an upgrade from Neil. And I think bringing in GR and Ludex can relieve some pressure off of Woosh to play better. So yeah, I really like Elevate's new roster. I'm waiting to see what kind of sh team comps they can run with that. Um, and apparently Gio is the nastiest support in the game right now. I am yet to see him on support. Okay, so that leaves Tommy Jet, Sorrow, Atomic Boom, and Neil out of the equation. What are they going to do? Um, so instantly I thought, you know, there's there's Little Big White Boy. He's played with them before. There's OG Comedy. He's played with some of them before. There's E Knives. He's played with some of them before. Or they could just totally go out and get another fifth. Um, and I thought, you know, they're probably going to stay together. And it makes the best sense for them considering you've got Tommy Jet, who's played with Sorrow and Neil. Then you have Tommy Jet, who's played with Atomic Boom and Neil. And then you have Sorrow, who's played with Neil and Tommy a bunch of times. And most recently, he's been with Atomic Boom on Elevate. So I think that those four guys have a lot of chemistry together. Especially between Tommy, Sorrow, and Neil. They've, they've played together on three teams. So I'd like to see if they have a new team. Let's talk about OG Comedy. I wanted to talk about him for a second. I think he's a little bit of in the void right now. By this, I mean it's like he's probably the biggest free agent that's most known in the community right now. There's some other big free agents out there. You know, there's Styles, Satisfy. But I think that Comedy is the one that everyone has their eyes set on right now. Or at least it seems that way. Um, I know there's at least four or five teams um, that are potentially, that are actively seeking comedy. <clears throat> and, and no one knows whether he wants to stay on Xbox or stay on PS4. Um, there's been rumors that he's going to team up with Satisfy. There's been rumors that he's going to team up with Styles. Uh, there's been rumors that he's going to play with press Y on the Xbox NA. Uh, who knows? He could play with Tommy and Neil and Sorrow and, and boom. Um, there's also a rumor that he's with Hill time styles and Richie. The problem I see with that is that Richie By the way, this was not easy to gather this small bit of information right here because he blocked me on Twitter. I, I don't know why. I've never said anything to him. Um, Richie has clearly stated that if the league is not getting salary, he doesn't want to play. If there's no salary, Richie's not interested. So when people tell me he's on a team right now with Comedy, Hilltime, and Styles. I don't understand it. I got to see it to believe it. I got to I got to see it to believe it. You know, we all say salary low, but that's his mentality. I understand his mentality. I can respect it. Certainly, I know all of us want to get paid, so, you know, respect those that are clearly stating that they want to get paid. But I just don't see him on that team uh, for that reason. 
Who knows? I mean, who knows? He could, he could, he could play. Change his mind. Um, but if that was a team, that'd be a, a pretty, really good team. It'd be on Xbox though, I think, because of Styles, uh, Hill Time. They're all more comfortable on Xbox. So I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Then then the void is over. But if not, I, I'm really... I just, I just want to know where comedy is going to go. Let's talk about sleeper teams for the PCL. PCL potential. I've got a couple teams here. Pull up my rosters, the uh, the the four rosters people gave me. Uh, first team I want to talk about is Swiper's new team. Obviously, Flashpoint is going to be uh, really good in the PS4 EU. Uh, since Swiper left, they needed a sub now, so they're going to keep Legacy main roster. Same roster you've seen at the last two lands is their main roster. And they're adding Harvey as their sub. Harvey's a really good pickup. Um, I don't have any problems with that. Uh, he can learn from the guys on Flashpoint. Flashpoint can maybe even take something away or learn something from Harvey as well. That's a good pickup there. Swiper builds a new team. If Swiper's in chat, I will... Gladly ask if he cares if I say any names. If not, we'll just keep it at that. I think his new team will be a, a contender as well. Whether he tells me I can release names or not. Uh, the, na the, the team that I think could make a, a, a run for second place, maybe even first place, is FY Midnight Oligarchs. Um, the FY Midnight Oligarchs is the Italian team. They're not all Italian. But check check this lineup out right here, okay? Check this lineup out. Tanks, we got Ali Low 14. If you're not familiar with these players, that's fine. They've been on the Mixer streams a couple times in the finals. Go back and watch those uh, in your free time. Ali Low 14 on front line. Centurio EU on front line. Don Canolo or Donka, uh, most commonly known as, on damage. The Rain on damage. And Nox Mave on your support. Nox Mave has the second most votes out of any support um, in the all-star ballots if you exclude the first place guys. Granted, he, he's losing by a huge percentage to Storm Avatar uh, in his own region, but out of all the second place guys, out of everybody that's in second for supports, Nox Mave has the most, almost double uh, of the guy closest to him. Okay, now you heard that lineup. Centurio, probably top two, top three tanks uh, in EU, okay? He's up there with Legacy and Op, all right? And I believe that Op and Legacy will even tell you this. You said, okay, so I gave you that lineup, right? Let me give you their new lineup, all right? That lineup was strong. That lineup got them to second place in PS4 EU. Let me give you their new lineup. Damages, The Rain, and Donka. Frontline, Centurio. Heal, their support is Nox Maeve. Ali Lowell is moved to their sub. They've signed a new guy. 
They stole him from another PS4 EU team. He's got second place right now in the damage all-star votes for PS4 EU behind Prosper Logic. The kid's a fragger. They're going to use him as a flex, though, because he can flex to front line. Itik has joined FY Midnight Oligarchs. That, that addition right there leaves me to believe that they can contest for first place at a... At a, with a better chance than they did the last time they contested for first place. You've got Itik coming in. Ali Lowe having to sit on the bench now. This lineup is nasty. This lineup is nasty. So I'm really liking, I like Flashpoint, of course. I like FY Midnight Oligarchs. That is my sleeper team. Um, and then we have Swiper's team. He said we can name drop, so let's. So, first of all, I like Swiper's team name. It's called The Rejects. Okay. Um, The rejects consist of, right now we have Swiper the One, Akimbo Mystic. Uh, Akimbo Mystic went to Valencia with Swiper. They've been on teams multiple times. They went to, to Valencia together. Akimbo Mystic was their support then. Uh, he went to HRX and he was a front line for them at that time. So Akimbo Mystic is back. Uh, Filet is playing for Swiper. That's a big pickup. That's a sleeper player in the EU. They bring in Sinner's Demise. The man's a fragger, okay? He's a big fragger. And they bring in Fanatics. Fanatics has the second most votes in Xbox EU frontline. Uh, in the all-star voting. Um, for those of you who haven't voted, by the way, explanation point vote, you can go ahead and vote. Average time is about six minutes. Someone took 27 minutes to fill that thing out. I don't know what they were doing. Um, but Fanatics is on PS4U now. Which is huge. Uh, so th this team is looking good. They've got a, a, a big name tank. Um, they've got two outstanding damages in Sinner's Demise and Swiper. Swiper, everybody knows Swiper. Um, and I feel like Swiper's going to be better. He broke up with his girlfriend to grind the game harder. Um, he qualified for the last two lands but didn't go. So I feel like he's been humbled. Uh, so that's going to help him going forward. And Sinner's Demise played in Console Wars. think he played in HRX qualifiers. Disappeared for a little bit. Been playing a lot of Fortnite. Kid's a fragger. Mad fragger. So that's a big pickup in itself. Filleted on the support. Uh, Akimbo Mystic on the other front line. I'm liking this. This team is looking good here. Uh, so Flashpoint is my, if I had to pick a safe bet uh, and the favorite. Swiper's new team is like the come up team that I would pick in the EU. FY Midnight Oligarchs uh, would be my sleeper team that I think could make a big push for first place here. Uh, let's change it up. Let's go to Xbox NA real quick. Of course, Onslaught is my pick to win the, the region. Just one summer finals, dominant team. Um, so they're just a dominant team. Second place team, I'd, I'd probably have to go with Press Y. I think Press Y has stuck together mainly. Um, I think they're looking for a fifth right now. 
Uh, they've been actively seeking comedy, so if that works out, that'd be a big addition to them. Um, but I think plus why this is gonna get a lot of <laughs> this is gonna get a lot of a lot of memes and trolls in chat. But I think Destronite is doing pretty well as a DPS. I know he tried being a frontline on teams before, didn't really work out. I know he tried being a support champion, didn't really work out. Um, but I think at this point in time, Destro Knight has just had that F you mentality. I don't really care anymore. I'm just going to work on myself. Um, he's got Ari over there helping him, uh, guiding him through it, mentoring him and stuff like that. So I think that duo together uh, is is potentially uh, very dangerous. I know Ari is going to be playing the flanks and the blasters, and I know uh, Destro is going to be playing the hit scans, the snipers, you know, uh, pretty much the, the backline DPS characters. Um, so... I'd like to see how well Press Y does. They have a really good tank in um, Sam. That's I Suck at Paladins for you. those of you who don't know his gamer tag. Um, their healer, Ash Clappus, really good. Uh, he He's one of the top supports in Xbox. Uh, I just think he doesn't get enough credit because Press Y doesn't get enough exposure. Uh, that's one of the problems with the All-Star Ballad is, you know, Elevate. Flashpoint, Vex, and, and, and Onslaught are dominating the polls, respectively. But it's mainly due to more exposure. Um, people say it's a popularity contest. Exactly. Well, all, all stars. Anything with fan voting is a popularity contest. So, there you go. Uh, Xbox EU, of course, Vex is my favorite. I think Vex was really strong at Spring Masters. Uh, and they weren't as strong at the... Uh, Summer finals, but I think it's because Slopadopoulos uh, had just been included into the lineup. I think moving forward, they're going to be working with Vex, or he's going to be working with Vex even more. So Slop is going to get a lot more time to mesh together, gain some chemistry with the rest of that lineup that has been together for uh, the amount of time that they have been. So. Uh, let's talk about the second place team over there. I, is Xbox EU going to have a team that steps up? You know, they, they have one team that's in second. Then they're no longer in second ever again. Then we have another team that's in second. Then they're no longer in second ever again. Is there going to be a team? We all know eights is going to talk a ton of trash. He's going to trash talk. He's going to make his... His B team of all stars, they they might make the finals. They might give Vex some problems. Vex will beat them. Ace will quit the game again, and then Ace will come back because he's the pro. Um, but let, let's take a look at some lineups that we see over here. We got Unstoppable with Specter one up, West Side Riders, Fine Ticks, Ranked, and Sibs. I like this lineup. This lineup looking good right here. Sibs is a fairly decent DPS. Ranked. Haven't seen much of his play at all. But I will tell you, West Side Riders, one of the top supports in Xbox EU. Um, he grinds the game. He works hard. He watches my stream, so that's a plus. That means you're going to become a god. Uh, duh. Um, they got Spectre one up. One of the... One of the top front lines. I think he's a little underrated um, in terms of the amount of people knowing who he is within his own region sometimes even. Sibs almost lost to Tay's Ice Block EV at 1 a.m. Okay. Nothing to add to that. Um, but I, I think Spectre and Fine Ticks and West Side Riders could potentially lead that team to a, a top three finish. Another team we got that I think is going to do pretty good is the Bulldogs. They got Tapsy on their flex. Uh, he's he's fairly decent at playing that flex, flex position. 
We got Killer Creed, Forever Alice, Duffman Rules, Tully, and and supposedly they are actively seeking Fluxy. They want to seek Fluxy uh, for that support role. Fluxy, uh, one of the top su three supports, I would say. Tully, really good DPS. Um, if I remember correctly, I think he's a, a blaster main. I can't remember uh, correctly. Duffman Rules. Another amazing player. Forever Alice, I think, would be the top player on that lineup. Again, he's a frontline. I think frontlines in Xbox EU, besides Vexed, um, really lead the pack uh, in terms of leading their team's success. I think leading uh, a team to successful runs in the PCS and the PCL moving forward in Xbox EU, really stands behind your tank play. I know in um, Xbox NA, it's be, the, the tanks are really important, but I think those damages are what leads those Xbox teams forward. And for the Xbox EU teams, I think it's the front lines. You know, we had Narc uh, and Trank, and then we had uh, Lexi on their front line now uh, with Slopadopoulos as well. So I think if you have a really good front line in Xbox EU, you can have a really good team. Uh, OTP, I think has the best tank lineup in Xbox EU, despite Vexed. Vexed, you know, they can go Lexi Narc, they can go Lexi Slop, they can go Slop Narc. They can just switch up their tanks all day and have better tanks than everyone else. But I think... Yes, Duffman Rules is the support, but I said they're actively seeking Fluxy as a support. And Tully is the hit scan. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I think the best, behind Vex, the team with the best tank duo would have to be OTP with, uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right. His name is XNYJUW, so I want to say Naiju. Is that Naiju? Is the X just not said um, but I, I think they've got the best tank duo w between Naiju and Ninja Zen Ninja Zen completely underrated in the Xbox EU I've actually uh, had that person send me some clips so we watched a couple clips of that guy playing um, completely underrated from what the all-star ballots are saying Um, five stack casuals is moving forward with Bizjop, Slayer, Smutney above them, and Tyloo above them. Great DPS. Uh, Slayer's a really good tank. I think he's a little bit underrated as well in terms of uh fan appreciation because no one really gets to see him play. Um, you know, unfortunately, only the finals are streamed. Um, so not everyone gets exposure. Only four teams make land, so that even dampens it a little too. Uh, but I think that the player that stands out to me the most here is Smutney. Smutney, for those of you who remember, played on Legacy's old burrito team and Mob Town team back on PS4. He moved to PC, and now he's back. I guess on Xbox, this is a rumor. Um, Smutney has not told me anything. I don't know if this is true that Smutney's playing for them. They told me Smutney's in the lineup, so. I'm um, actually working on getting new emotes, sub badges, and new panels. So don't worry about that, Sam. Oh, which reminds you, I need you guys to let me know what you think the sub badges should look like. I was thinking of Vuvuzela, and then tier two is two Vuvuzelas, and then the third one is me blowing a Vuvuzela, and then the fourth one is me with the Vuvuzela in my butt. Just kidding. Uh, misplaced Vuvuzelas. Um, so I think Vexed, if I had to pick my team to finish, to, to give Vex their biggest problems, it would have to be between two teams. It has to be between 
OTP. In five stacked casuals. I think OTP has a better chance. Their tanks can lead them to successful uh, games against Vex. The problem I have with them is I think they need to get a better DPS. Uh, one or two of them. Or another flex role. They've got LG Legends, Tekens, Suki Lusushi, and Bag Badge Tiger. Maybe if they upgrade their... Badge Tiger is a really good support, don't get me wrong. If they could grab Fluxy... Steal Luke from Vexed or, or make a huge play like that or, or grab someone big from another uh, from PS4U. Um, I think that could be the play for OTP. I think that could be the, the play. And last but not least, PS4 NA. Um, Fiery Impact was going to be on Thomas and Friends with Cop. Uh, those of you who don't know cop cops are really good support in the ps4 na region so this team thomas and friends was going to be my second place team behind elevate i think this team has moved up i think thomas and friends has so much potential. This is their lineup right here. They've got Business as their tank. Business has developed into one of the best tanks in the North American PS4 region. Despite the memes, he has become one of the best frontline players in that region on that console. Um, I remember Business when he was in my stream. I only had two viewers, and they were Business and O'Neal. Business... Um, has developed into such a talented frontline player. He's gotten really good at acknowledging how to uh, play and control point without just doing the usual stand on point and die. Stay there as long as you can and die. Um, He's learned a lot. Uh, there's so this is their lineup: business, fiery impact, galaxy, Guiba, cop, three subs in Leo Sukio, Izzy Mitchell, and Geppetto. Fiery impact and galaxy would be besides elevate. Maybe even up there with them. Considerably the the best or second best behind Elevate. I think they could hang with them. In terms of damage duos. Fiery plays the flanks. The projectiles like Cassie, Shaolin... Um, and he plays those hit scans and then you have Galaxy who plays the blasters Galaxy can flex and play the hit scans Galaxy can flex and play the Shaolin and the Cassie and stuff like that and a little bit of the flanks as well which is why there's such a, a dominant duo is because they can focus on select champs for each other because they both can, it can draw away from each other's champ pool Fiery Impact Fiery Impact can't, is not going to be playing. And that's why I wanted to talk about this. Fiery Impact is probably third third best um, DPS in PS4 NA. Behind Richie and Tommy. Now granted I haven't seen the new guys on Elevate play on PS4. I'm talking pre, before the new Elevate roster transferred. Fiery was third behind Tommy and Richie. Or Richie and Tommy. Um, and Fiery has, you know, he's got IRL stuff to take care of. So he's not playing. So what does Thomas and Friends do? 
They moved Geppetto into the lineup. The problem is Geppetto... Here's the problem I have with Geppetto moving into the lineup. He's not as experienced in competitive play. He wants to learn. That's fine. But your team's stock value just dropped. Now, if they move Izzy Mitchell into the lineup, does Guiba flex to damage? Because Izzy can play that, that support damage flex, that support tank flex. But Izzy right now, in this stage of competitive play, has a limited champ pool. Um, the next thing, Shrew and Parker count as flex, so we don't count them in the DPS category. That's why they weren't in that when I said that. They are better DPSs than them, but I'm talking the damage roll as if the flexes don't count. Um, then they have Sukio. Sukio can flex between the tank and damages. But I don't think moving Sukio in there would work. You need someone who can who can play the hit scans. If you move Guiba to hit scan, then you need someone who can 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 flex to the off tank um, here and there. And I, I don't think Sukio can do that as well. Um, so I I don't see that happening. So reportedly they have brought in Hatsu Chibi. I don't like this at all. I don't like this. I don't like... Hatsu Chibi was on Jalapeno Hotties. Good player. Good support player. Uh, but the problem is, I don't like the champ pool for the meta that we have right now. And I don't like Hatsu Chibi in the lineup. You move Hatsu Chibi to the lineup and you keep Cop in there. It means Cop is moving to the flex. Cop can play the damages. Cop can play some tanks. Cop can flex very well. But I think Cop is top three, maybe even top two, arguably support players in PS4 and A. Um, of course, Raokian's ahead of him in my opinion, but Raokian hasn't been playing. Of course, uh, Jordan could be ahead of him, but Jordan's not on a team that I know of. Jordan hasn't been playing the game competitively like that. Um, so I put Neil and Cop there. And I personally I would take Cop over Neil. There's a lot of raw potential there. He's he's young. He's newer to the game than Neil. Um I don't like Neil's champ pool because it can be it can be you you can run strats in drafts against Neil to prevent his team from having success off of Neil's back because of that you you know you can ban Fury or ban Genos pick pick Grover and then he's stuck with the Saris he can play the Pip he can play the Damba so on but he's not as strong on those as he is his his tops um GR is a support but again I have not seen him play on PS4 I have not seen him play support um, so I've only seen him play damages. So we're going off of, we're going off of pre summer finals or I'm sorry, right after summer finals. summer finals is the end. That is when we cut off. That is when we're doing all of this. Um, so as soon as PCL play starts, these teams start playing. That's when we'll incorporate them into these, um, so I, I believe Cop can do very well on the flex. Hatsu Chibi, top champ, Saris. Uh, second behind that is the Pip. And then uh, Genos. And then Grover. So your top... Damba... Hatsu Chibi's Damba is non-existent. Hatsu Chibi's Furia might as well be non-existent. Uh, the Ying... Right down there with the Damba. I don't believe you can have the success that you would have had with Fiery in your lineup and Cop on your support with Hatsu in there. And I've been thinking, what are some things that I can do as this team 
to fix this problem is to go out and get a hit scan uh, damage champ. So I thought about this. You can go after, you know, it's rumored that Tommy's on a team, but you can go out for Tommy Jet. That would be a good hit scan to have. Uh, there's two people in mind that are dominant hit scans if you were to bring them out of retirement. I know they haven't played in a while, but you could always look towards unique strokes. You could look towards objection. Um, you could even go as far as grabbing someone who does play the game, someone who is in the community but doesn't play competitively. Uh, you can go after O'Neal. Everyone knows O'Neal is the Lex main. He, he hasn't shown interest in playing competitively before, but I think if you could have a conversation with him, and if the, at the end of that conversation, you two figure out mutually that, okay, you can play, you can make some, some money potentially, and you know you can actually show off your skill. He's got a really good Strix. He's got a really good Lex. He's, he can play the Victor. He can play the Tyra. Um, he can play the Zin. He can play uh, the Buck. So I think... With that champ pool that he has, that is a similar, not skill-wise, but champ pool and missing-wise of what Fiery Impact brought to your team to a certain extent. Someone like that, someone like Unique Stroke, someone like Objection, someone like Tommy, someone... Um, So I think that's what they need to do. They need to actively seek a DPS, a hit scan, a flank player, something like that. I don't think gaining a support like Hatsu is the way to go. So they were my number two team. But now I'm going to have to move away from them. My number two team right now, not so strong as a number two pick though, is uh, the Nan Handlers. Okay. The Nan handlers right now, listen to this lineup. Front line is Slurpee. Damages are Author the God and Vengeance. And their two flexes are Roman Rulers and IQZ. Or Dez. I think this team has a lot of potential because of the veterans on this team. They're all veterans. Uh, besides Roman Rulers. Roman Rulers is a veteran in Paladins itself, but not in competitive play as much as the rest of this team. I think Dez and Arthur are really good together. They've always played on teams together 90% uh, of the time. I think their communications within each other is good. I think they have played so much together that they can play together and they have these these niche moves that they just they know off the bat. Um I think another good thing about this lineup is Vengeance coming back. Although I don't know how well he's going to do on that damage position. Um, if any of you remember, he played for Coma back in the day. And again, uh, the second Coma was not as promising as the first Coma back during Valencia qualifiers. Um, but... I think, you know, he played frontline during those times. I'm wondering how well he'll do on the damage, especially for not playing the game as much or as often. So he's going to have to start his grind again. Um, but I think Arthur, Dez, and Slurpee can uh, carry this team to a top two, top three finish in PS4 NA. Uh, so that that's the PS4 NA right there. Okay, so I know all of you want to see the all-star votes. Now, remember, this is not the end results. Voting does not end until uh, Monday morning at midnight, which is Sunday night. So Sunday night. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to this here. Boom, boom, boom. 
Boom, boom. Yeah, I totally forgot to do something real quick. I need to copy and paste the mic <laughs> into this. Okay, there we go. All right, so your top three vote getters here. Uh, leading overall amongst all roles and all regions and both consoles. Prosper Logic with the most votes. Plays for Flashpoint from Europe. Uh, you know, he's that damage role. You often see him on the Leanne. You see him popping on the Bomb King and uh, playing the Cassie as well. He's been to HRX, Spring Masters, and Summer Finals. He's finished third uh, slash fourth at HRX, losing in the first round to Blight. Uh, Spring Masters, they beat Fable to win it. Summer Finals, they lose to Elevate in the uh, second round of the loser's bracket. Uh, but this guy right here, Prosper Logic, has had, had, he, he's got the most votes out of anybody in the all-star voting right now. And uh, second behind him. What the fuck? Second behind him would have to be Trenzik. Uh, from Onslaught in the North American region. He's their frontline player. Uh, Makoa Anara Ruckus, his top three champs. Although at LAN, take that Ruckus out, put Term in there. That's all you've seen him play. Uh, he's only been to two LANs, Spring Masters and Summer Finals. Finishing second in his first one with Fable. You know they were the favorite. Uh, lost there. And then Summer Finals, they come in first. Big win for the Big T. Uh, Trenzik, second. Here's the interesting thing that I think is just pretty cool. Trenzik, for the first three days, had the most votes out of everybody. Prosper Logic passed him up most recently, most recently yesterday. Um, but Trenzik had the most votes overall. Now, if you take out every player, if you take all the land players, all the all the people that went to land, if you take them out of the polls, the number one tank in Xbox NA is Styles by votes, and he, without the land players, Styles would have the most votes out of anybody in the All Star ballot. So Xbox NA tanks, kind of getting some some big uh, big credits there. The and not only that, the rest of the tanks in Xbox NA have a lot of votes themselves, you know. Um, I think I Suck at Paladins is number three in the region. Number four right now is Dovakin. So big ups to uh, those four guys, Trenzik, Styles, uh, Sam, and Dovakin. And here we go. Uh, Onslaught is dominating top three right now. Top three. Most votes is Prosper Logic overall. Most overall votes is Trenzik at number two. Number three is the the Skepster here uh, from Onslaught North American. Damage, it, top chance, Buck, Victor, and Drogos. We clearly saw this at LAN. Skeppy got his Buck so many times. He played the Drogos a few times. He played the Victor. He played the Buck. Just dominated on the Buck. Got plays over plays with the victor um so that's a big thing there for uh onslaught is to have skeppy in that damage role with the hit scans those damages that he can just push in uh so this guy has the third most votes out of anybody in the all-star ballot so big ups to uh big ups to prosper Trenzik, and uh skeppy there congratulations in leading the overall votes uh th thus far remember if you haven't voted yet, you can always go ahead and vote uh, with that link right there. Voting's open for a few more days, so don't worry. Uh, let's go. <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, look at the top ten in each role for both regions. For your North American region, there's your top 10 for frontline damages, supports, and flex. Now, this is PS4 and Xbox combined. Uh, look at the front lines for 
the North American Xbox dominating their the top three. They got Trenzik and Styles there at one and three. Whoosh is at number two. He's got more votes than Styles now, so that's that that's a big ups to Whoosh there. Uh, then we have Sorrow at number four. This is actually surprising. A lot of people remember him playing Tank for the Runaways. Um, because he was the coach for Elevate. Didn't didn't get to play at all, from what I remember. So that's big ups to Sorrow on the number four uh, overall votes for Frontlines. Sam Dovakin Business Evil Shadow at number eight. Uh, which means he's third in the NA behind business and whoosh. Uh, Nightmare at number nine and ten Roman rulers. Uh, so the biggest surprise here on frontline is Nightmare for me. Um, it would also have to be Roman rulers. Roman rulers, no one's really seen him play competitively, so that's a big ups to him for making the top ten. Nightmare, um, I think this is a big a big deal for him. Uh, this may be people telling him to play frontline and to stop playing damage. Um, so that could be a, a, a clue there for Nightmare. Uh, let's take a look at the damages. We've got Skeppy and Cool Matt leading, respectively, uh, after their big LAN finish. Tommy Jet is in third despite not attending LAN. Um Yes, Bohan, you guys were on a team, but did you make finals and did you appear on Mixer? This is what I'm talking about, the exposure. Uh, we got Tommy Jet and Richie coming in third and fourth, uh, and that's basically what the NA Xbox and NA PS4 look like right there. You got Skeppy, Cool Matt, and then Tommy Jet and Richie, uh, they're leading their respective. Soldier Bot at number five, which is interesting because he's not playing the game anymore. So... Uh, Bohan pre-mixer was Twitch. You didn't make finals, which means you didn't show up on Twitch. So Fire Impact at number six. This is what I'm talking about. Fire Impact so high because he's so valuable to your team. He's so viable as a as a damage. Um, I think he pairs well with Galaxy. I think I would say before all of you get fucking upset again. Before, before Emmett. Before all these Xbox people and excluding Parker and Shu because of the flex position, I think Galaxy is the best blaster on PS4 NA right now. Uh, but we'll have to see after the PCL starts. Uh, Galaxy right there at number seven. Number eight, Objection. And number 10, Peacekeeper are my biggest surprises. Objection doesn't play the game anymore. Peacekeeper has been missing uh, from what I've seen in a while um aspect you're like level 12 and you can't aim on console okay this is not pc aspect okay uh supports we got miracle of course leading neil jordan sat rocky on cop ballenberry ass clapis siski and llamas at high hop I personally think Llamas at IHOP should be higher than Siski, but I think Asclapis should be higher than uh, where he is. Although I don't know exactly where I would put him. I would put Sats as the number two healer behind Miracle. Uh, potentially putting Raukion, Jordan, and Cop there in for third. Um, I think I, I can't really choose between those three. I think if I had to, I would choose Raukion. Uh, and then maybe Jordan. Jordan and Cop both young, both have raw potential, both really good. But Jordan has more experience than Comp in the competitive play as of right now. So I think that's what I would do. Why GR on DPS, not on support? Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go again. Here we go again. For the 50,000th time, GR has not played support on PS4 in the competitive scene gr has not been seen on the streams in the exposure spotlight okay i'm not watching scrims i'm not watching the the pre-rounds leading up to the finals i'm watching lands i'm watching finals why because that's the only thing the spectators are exposed to Okay, what did he play at HRX? What did he play uh, in the most recent times that he played on stream? DPS. 
Moving forward into the flex position, after we answered the question for the 12th time, we have Wonderful and Shu leading. Now, Shu and Sir James Parker are in the same category to get. Um, and I think that I would have chose SJP, personally. SJP wanted to be in the flex position. He said, put me in the flex. I think maybe he wanted to compete with Shu. Uh, Shu's really good flexing from that the, the flanks and damages, uh, mainly the flanks, to supports. I like that. We saw that at... Um, we saw that at uh, the last land here. He, he was flexing onto the Grok. He played some Makoa. Uh, he played some Buck. So I think that was pretty big. Yeah, he played in one. So you want me to put him in the support category. Okay. You want me to put GR Crazy in the support category. From one match, okay, from one stream, over the dozens that I've seen him play damage, and you want me to do a full body in-depth analysis of GR Crazy support from that one stream. No problem. Thank you. Let's tell scientists to stop doing multiple experiments. There's your European leaders right there. Front lines, we got I only all being the legacy leading it up. They're neck and neck with each other in their own region as well. Uh, Lexi Zen, number two. Fanatics, number four, although he's moved to PS4 uh, side of things to play with Swiper. Um, Naiju, all the way at 10. I would put him a little higher, maybe a little above Slayer. Uh, damages, Prosper Logic. Welsh Mania and World Edit. Uh, this could have changed already today. I made this yesterday. I made this uh, yesterday with the results that were at that time. Welsh Mania and World are literally one vote difference. I will log on to the thing. World Edit will be ahead by one vote. A couple hours later, Welsh Mania will be up by one vote. A couple hours later, it's back and forth, back and forth. So that's pretty fun to watch um, who gets the most votes at the end of the poll between those two. ITK at number four. Remember, he's moved to the flex position um, to play for FY Midnight Oligarchs. So that's why I got FY as my number two team. Then we got uh, Kultra Danka. Really big support. If you look at this, you got some really strong supports. So obviously, if you need a if you need a tank in the NA region, you want an Xbox tank. If you need a damage in the EU region, you want a PS4 EU damage. Uh, no offense to Welsh and World, but who? Biggest surprise to me in the damage is Nico Noob is above the Rain Tully and Kings. I haven't seen much of Nico Noob play. Uh, but from what I have seen, he's really good. But I just can't see him that high. Uh, support Storm, Avatar, and Narc leading their uh, positions in their consoles, respectively. Nox, Maeve in third. Luke is too good. Actually has dropped down. I checked this morning. Fluxy is above him in Xbox now. So that's interesting to watch. I don't know if Fluxy passed up Tariq yet. But Tariq has a fairly good amount of votes. Mainly Storm Avatar and Knox getting a lot of those votes in the PS4 region. Smutney's up there as well. Duffman rules at number 10. Westside Riders and Bay Marius. Uh, Bay Marius climbed all the way from last place to the, uh, I think, fourth in the Xbox EU region. But he's at number seven overall between the two. Uh, in the flex position, number one is Slopadopoulos. This is surprising considering Good Lad has done so well in that flex position at both lands, um, especially when they won the, the spring land. But uh, the big man slop coming in at number one for flex. Uh, number two, Good Lad. Swiper the one is not that far behind Good Lad, but Good Lad's pulling him away from him uh, inch by inch every day. T Trank is right behind Slop in the Xbox region, but he's number four behind Good Lad and Swiper. Unlimited Fails came with zero votes for the first two days and has moved all the way up uh, into third in the EU PS4 region, but now he's at number five overall. High on Taps, he's moved up. Sir Benji and Centurio 
uh, tied with the same amount of votes between each other. Uh, they dropped down. They were switching back and forth for third place between uh, behind Swiper and Good Lad, but they moved down. Uh, I am Legendary uh, and Pro V Hunters wraps it up. They're both from the Xbox side of things. Um, Centurio should be in the tanks option, but he wanted to be in the flex. Um, he did tell me that if he was in the he he did tell me if he was in the tank role. Everyone knows that he is the best tank in PS4 EU. Those are his words, not mine. He also said. Since he's in the flex position, it's okay. It's time to give Op and Legacy some some spotlight because everyone knows he would destroy them in the polls there. So that's what he told me. Uh, so tell me who you think uh, should be higher in the polls or who should be lower in the pools. Who's the biggest surprise to you in those top tens? And um, who's who's not a surprise, I guess. Um, I mean, if anyone has any questions, you can ask them. That's pretty much it for me. I've gone through everything that I've potentially had on my docket there. I can open up Discord. If anybody wants to come in Discord and talk on the show. Feel free. Any questions? No? You're really surprised I'm not reading the rest of that sentence. I don't want to fucking get meme trolled or start any fucking bullshit again. All right, I guess that's the end of the show. Uh, we got nobody with any questions. No problem, Donk. I hope you had a good time at the beach, man. Um, so this video is going to be about two hours long. I'm going to upload this on YouTube. So let's see how that works. Uh I guess... Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, good luck to everybody playing in the open bracket week one of the PCL qualifiers. Uh, Saturday is EU, August 3rd. 3rd? 2nd? 2nd? 4th? 5th? August 4th and August 5th, Sunday for NA. Good luck to everybody out there. Remember, if you play both weeks, you have a better chance of making that top eight for the PCL uh, league qualifiers. Uh Am I going to cover what happened with Woosh and Wonderful at LAN? Um, the only thing I know is what he, or, he say, she say stuff uh, and what has been shown on Twitter. So I don't know it. And I was told in one of the comments uh, in that survey, it says what can be added or deleted from uh, Console Quarter to make it better. One of the things was a co-host. And I'm definitely working on that. Um, preferably, I would like someone who's not afraid to talk, not afraid to have their own opinion, but also not be as biased. You can have some favorites, but you can't clearly show your favoritism uh, repeatedly. Um, also, I would prefer you, you can know PS4 if you want, but I would prefer it be someone who knows about Xbox, um, whether it's NA or EU, doesn't matter. If you know about both, that is even better. Um, someone who can do the show can, on a consistent basis every week. Um, someone who can work with me on, on stats and video clips and stuff like that. Because, you know, when I'm doing the Summerland recap and I'm talking about matches, I want to be able to show the video while I do that. I didn't have enough time. Um, it's kind of my own fault. I was kind of making fucking meme videos and putting them on Twitter with the treppy and uh, shoe thing. Uh, but, you know... A long day of editing. I just you, you gotta mix in some fun here and there, but it's a lot of games, a lot of clips. I gotta watch all those games over again, you know, stuff like that. So I'm sorry, guys, if I can't fulfill your expectations. Um, I'm working on it. 
you know, it's a lot of work to gather this, all this information. I put in all these right here. I got to think of, okay, what is, what is a topic we can talk about this week? What is something that is good? What is a good topic? What, sh what should we do this? Um, you know, if I want to talk about certain players, I got to look them up on the guru. I look them up on my paladins. I look them up in the paladins forge app. I got to write all these stats down from what I see. Then I got to go back in all the mixer streams Try to see if they're in that game or in this game, how well they did on this champ. You know, it's a lot of work, um, and it gets easier as I go because I record everything into the stat sheets and everything like that. Um, I go back and I have a, a, a spreadsheet that is uh, it's a template, and I use that for all my drafts. So I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to make this show enjoyable for you. I'm trying to get everything right. Another thing in the comment section was if I don't know something, I shouldn't make it up. That is definitely not what I do. Uh, for example, if there's three parties included in a topic, I ask all three for their stories, and I want to I want to give the the story I want to give all three stories a chance to shine on the show. If only one person answers me, that's the only thing I have to go with. Um, so I'm not pretending that I know things. I am giving you what I've been told, what I've been shared, um, and whenever I ask people. Uh, about a, you know an event or a story or, or a roster or anything I, or drama or anything, I always ask them, can you tell me what happened? But also I am going to share this with the show, on the show. So there's always that. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, if you want to stick around, go ahead. But uh, thank you for everyone coming out. This will be on YouTube as soon as a two-hour video will upload. So... If not, you can go always go back in the uh, Twitch VOD. I know that's a little difficult for some of you, but I'm sorry about that. Everybody, have a great day. And uh, yeah, keep grinding, boys.